Well, today's project, um, this video is probably gonna look a little different at some point because I forgot to pack charged batteries for my uh, camcorder here. Um, so I'll switch over to the cell phone to, just so I get the video, but we got a little skid steer, the Caterpillar 246. I believe it's just 246, it's not a D or anything. Yeah, just Caterpillar 246. They've had some issues with this thing starting. One of the most common problems with this thing is the um, mechanical lift pump ends up going bad. So this one looks like it's original equipment. Usually if it's painted yellow, it's original equipment. We're gonna go ahead and pull this off real quick and I'll show you guys a couple of things about the, uh, the lift pump once I get it off. They're really easy to do, they're really easy to get to. They're just right down in here. Two bolts holding them on, two lines, old one off, new one on, and you're good to go. All we gotta do, take this line off, take that line off, Take those four 10 millimeter headed bolts off and we get that pump off. Uh, my camera phone, or my camcorder just died, so I'm gonna have to do this on my cell phone. Uh, so I can't set up a time lapse or anything, but I'll get all that stuff taken off real quick and I'll show you guys the pump. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a little tip about these uh, Caterpillar. They used to use these in these little Shabura, um, what are these, 3204? 3024Cs. Uh, so this motor is built by Shibura and uh, over in Japan, I believe, and then sent to Perkins in the U.S. Perkins finishes the assembly, paints it yellow, sends it to Cat. Cat puts it in an air machine, calls it a 3024C. So on the fuel system on these, they have these little seals that are supposed to go on. Uh, I got I'm using my phone right now, but on here. Somebody's been in here before. Uh, this thing ran out of fuel and then they tried to put more fuel in it, started cracking lines loose and something, apparently somebody's removed a lot of the seals. You can kind of see the seal in here in this fuel pump. So we're gonna have to go back to Caterpillar, get uh, all the seals for the lines, replace all the seals. I'm gonna go and put these red cats back on the new pump that we just put in. But So I wanted to uh, show you guys something. A lot of guys will replace lift pumps. Now, lift pumps are pretty cheap and they go out a lot. I like to replace these with electric lift pumps. We didn't have one available right now because I like to use a particular brand. But a lot of people replace these. This goes on the engine like this and they'll grab this little lever and when it doesn't work, they'll say, oh, fuel pump's bad. The problem with that is the cam has a little eccentric lobe that'll push this. And when it pushes that primer up, if this is pushed all the way up, I don't know if I can do it with my hand or not. No, I can't. You can see it doesn't take hardly any pressure at all. And they're like, oh, the fuel pump's bad. No, what's happening is this part right here is just sitting on the eccentric on the camshaft. You need to bump the engine over a little bit, and then you can actually use the lever on here. Now, now I'm not saying every single time, because a lot of times the little action inside here where it grabs this lever and cams it over will get worn out, and then it is a problem. But if you grab this, and it's that loose like that, bump over the engine and then try to do it or try to reprime it like that. Fuel pump is extremely easy to take out. Only issue was uh, getting to the freaking bolts. Bolts were a little kind of hectic to get to and scraping the gasket off. Somebody glued the gasket to the block, probably at the factory. And I probably could have gotten away with reusing it, but I don't like to do that, especially on a customer's uh, job. I'd rather you know, spend the time, scrape the gasket off, put a brand new gasket, and that way if it does leak, I'm like, hey, I used a brand new gasket, I used silicone, I used sealing and everything, I did everything that I could. If I just leave the old gasket back on there and it leaks and the customer calls me, hey, that fuel pump's leaking that you put on, if I tell them, oh, it's probably because I left the old gasket on, it makes you look kind of like an idiot. So we're gonna order some of these. I'll look at the part numbers tonight. Uh, I might have the part number down in the description. I don't know if I find it in time, but uh, it's about 70 bucks from uh, Caterpillar and. If you run these a lot, I highly suggest installing an electric fuel pump. I might do that conversion on this um, uh, at some point. I don't know. It's up to the owner. The owner's holding the, uh, <laughs> the phone right now. But short, sweet little video. I hope you guys like the video. If you're not familiar with this engine, I actually tore apart one of these engines in another video. It's called like a Perkins Caterpillar Shibura N844, whatever it is. I think of the Caterpillar. If you look at my old videos, you'll find it. The fuel system in these is a little bit weird. You have your lift pump, you got your primary fuel filter, your lift pump, puts it into secondary, goes up to the uh, injection pump. The injection pump is actually where these four lines connect right here. There's like six bolts that hold it in and it goes in through the top. If you pull it off, it looks like 
Kind of looks like uh, hydraulic lifters. But there's a shutdown solenoid in the back. When you pull this pump out, you have to loosen that little arm. You have to move that arm out of the way. Pull the pump out. When you put the arm back in, you put that. Uh, you put the pump back in. You slide the little arm back over, and a little thing that sticks out, and you put the cotter pin back on it. So if you get one of these, <clears throat> and somebody's pulled the injection pump out, and it won't start, I can almost guarantee you they didn't get that arm back on. They didn't put that cotter pin back in. But um, I wish I could show you, but I'm not going to pull. A, <laughs> I'm not going to pull apart something perfectly working uh, just to show you. But hope you liked the video. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hopefully the comments will be turned back on soon. And uh, if they're not, if they are. Right now, go ahead and leave your comments, and I'm working on getting the comments back on. I'm actually in contact with YouTube right now about it, so they they informed me it's just a glitch. My channel should not have been affected by that, but it did, so it'll be remedied. But hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and get out and fix them.